standard B pencil, you could be using an HB or a 2B and what you'll do, you can use your grid pattern to get your basic outline like I've done here, we've just got our very basic outline of where the, the sort of shapes might be and from there we start our shading process now what I like to do is I try to try and just get an outline of where things are and then thereafter we start looking for the darkest areas which we can put in so that it's and the, the thing that you want to get away with if you're drawing out in the in the field is that you want to get the essence of absolutely everything before you sort of have to carry on before you have to pack up and, and move so you want to find where the darkest areas are even if you just put an example in which you can then complete the others you get an idea of what is the dark part, what is the light part and so you get a sense of so we've got a, a small gap here and the idea is we are wanting to show that there are some things that are standing out in the front so we have a spike at the front we have another spike at the front and we have another spike in the front here, this quiver tree showing okay so we're going to draw those different spikes coming out quite a sharp pencil but not pressing too hard because we want to now this, these spikes are going to be behind this one then coming out on its own again so we're drawing the ones that we are going to see there and then these ones in the background are going to be behind so all your shapes are going to be behind that one that we drew first and all we are drawing are these long slender triangles that are coming out so let's start with that basic concept of those triangles. So what are we going to do there? In order to see these ones in the foreground, we're going to be wanting to just shade and now I'm just gently pressing to shade in, going backwards and forwards, soft gentle shade to make sure that we're not thinking. Then we want to be able to see this one in the front here as well and there's another one at the back there and so then we want to again shade behind it, the one that's going out in the background here that one, that one can become dark so that we leave that one as light and then again there's another one in the background here that one can be dark so that we see this one as light and so in order to see anything that one in the back there can be dark as well as this one coming out the bottom here so these ones in the front will always remain light and there might be a case where it goes out in the back there as it hits the background it starts becoming dark again but essentially we're looking to make the ones in the foreground light and the ones in the background dark okay so we've got dark even the ones light in the foreground and we're going to do that throughout the whole thing so that we can see the ones in the foreground so the idea is to try and go throughout the whole picture in this front section going to identify where your quiver of spikes are going to be because they're all pretty much the same these trees they have this quiver up the top which is like a flare that goes out and we can start by getting those in and then you start working in the ones in the background then you'll find that slowly but surely it starts coming together 
Now, you, you don't always have an option to look at every single spike in detail, so you've got to get the recipe. And then you can just replicate that recipe, finding out which is the light area, which is the dark. In order to see this, there's going to have to be some light and some dark areas as well. And so in the central part of this, we see how there's some branches that, that come up and they come down and branch into the front here and these ones also they branch down and come into the front and then you have these other ones coming up behind it so we're just looking at the outline of those at the moment in the background here we have the branches that would be right at the back All right, and so how do we separate those in order to see them compared to these ones. So we have theoretically needing a light and a dark, light and dark, light and dark, in order for one to see the other. Ideally, you want to be able to try and draw. We're going to use the guiding lines of the outside to start with. So we can keep drawing and shading. You want to be able to, to just show that that is round. So we're going to go around and round and round. This one in the background here. And the same with this one here. We could just shade it. the differences between the two. As you can see, we've got just a basic shape of a shade in the background there. And then if we have another one coming through here, from the background there, again, we can just, if we want to, keep it flat, nice and simple. We don't have to give too much information there. And then if we come into the foreground here, we've got this one coming around, and coming up, also coming up there, and then again in the front here. Let's get it to come right around, and then as it comes up, there. So, again in the front here, we can make, for example, this tree is going to drop down here, branch comes around. And then we have another branch that comes out. And then it drops down. This one is in the background and it's in the shade, so we want to be able to do it. Now you've got to make sure that the shading in is the same color, or the same tone as your outline. You don't want to end up with strong outlines. Right, so the way this one came up, and you see it sort of bulged out a bit too much there. Let's make that so let's make this in the background here the darker part so that we can see the front now you'll notice I'm not shading in any round direction I'm just putting it as a flat background so if you want to you can take the time to to draw the individual texture of it but not entirely necessary just so that we can see and then again there's a shape underneath here another dark one so that we can see these light ones in the front and then again there so that will show us as it comes down then into the central area now you can make this darker as we continue into the towards the final level what a one so let's say for example the light is coming from this side as well we can then make the right hand side of this tree darker there we go and by doing that you get to also then show that there's perhaps some bark and this has got a particularly like it's got like a papery the way that it peels off so you can have a dark line and it sort of fades out so that you're showing that sort of it's got a, it disappears in and the same this side here we have a little crack and then it fades out on the one side so and then you can maybe have a little sharp scene so the one side it's, it becomes quite so it shows that it's got like a beautiful texture of sort of leafiness almost okay so what we'll do now is we'll just time lapse the the rest of these and then uh, we can move on to the 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 surrounding areas
Now the same concept applies down in around the base of this tree. So we have uh, we can shade and you can see there'll be a dark area there and then there'll be a light area around it. So this is the shadow that we're creating in order to be able to see the top or around this this rock. So let's take this rock for example. There's a nice dark area in the foreground. So that we can say for example there's the top of this rock here. Then this here this is a rounder shaped rock, so we can do some basic rounder shaped marks to show that it is roundish. But we're wanting to make sure that it stays uh, as a sharp background and Rocks are always going to have sharp edges associated with them, so hard edges, so there's going to be very little shading. So we make sure that if there's going to be this is going to be the rock, then we'll have a series of dark, straight edged shapes in the background in order to make sure that you can just keep doing blocks of light and dark making sure that they are geometric in order for them to stand out so that you will then be able to have, if you want this rock to stand out for example you will make sure that it has its light now if you can see there's the light on the top there coming down to the dark around the outside then the direction that the object is growing gets right down to dark at the base here And it has that light on the top again surrounded by a dark in the background will help to show the highlight of this part in the front here where let's say that that is dark my mark making is flat to show that it's a flat surface and then down the bottom we've got again we can show that it's a shadow area there might be a little, the top of a rock standing out here so that is bright and around the background it is then dark here yeah. so all of your shapes then start to to jump out light and darks flat areas, flat sides there's another rock here for example and so what that does is you have light and darks everywhere and then, then you start creating the background. What that does is then, whenever there's a light and a dark, you get the stuff to sort of stand out. And you can build your entire landscape like that. You can have small cracks and a flat surface here, for example. Let's make this rock flat. This is the flat surface of this rock. You can make it flat by just having flat, straight lines on top of it. And then as it comes up to the edge there, the water flows across and then straight down. So wherever you can picture the water flowing down, and let's say this is the side of the rock here, you can see the water flows in, and then it flows straight down. And so you can make the side of this side here flat. There, so we can make that, that whole side of the rock. There can be like a uh, light top. Okay. Let's time lapse the rest of that.